Welcome to the land of Era. It has a long and troubled history that involves one law that stood above all else. A human life outweighs that of any other. The world was united under the banner of man, and though the elves were smart, the orcs strong, the gnomes witty, dwarves hardy, man had something that conquered them all. Numbers. By sheer numbers they subjugated the world, but with this came corruption and decay, leading to a weakness that the other races could not ignore. They united to fight for their freedom in what would be known as the Red Moon Rebellion. And just as fast as it had rose, the human empire was no more. Two hundred years hence, all races have carved out a peaceful world for themselves, leaving what was left of the once mighty human empire to fight over what little land they had left. However, a new threat looms on the horizon of the desert sea, threatening to enslave all and conquer everything within its path. This is where our adventurers come in. They are representatives of their race, aiming to unite the human lands who stand in the path of this danger. Though the flames of hate still ember, it is time to forget the past and unite, or die divided. <laughs> Welcome to the D&D campaign, everyone. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Can't believe, I mean, you know, your names. I can't believe you started the recording after we made all the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, if that was your whole entourage of, you. If that was all you had in the back, dude, then we've got serious problems because this campaign is gonna be long. I hope you were just warming up. There's plenty of time for jokes. To be honest. More jokes will come. Do not worry. Yeah. But yeah, first up we have Jordan and his character Valrain, a Tengu Magus. Spell sort type thing. Yep, that'd be me. And then we have Masuki. It's Xander's character, who is a Kitsune ninja. Right here? Yep. And we also have Paddy, who's, uh, whose name I've accidentally hidden. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> who's Lipso Drofa Drofan? Drofan. Is that it? Drofan, yeah. Stupid card pronounced names. It's Lipso Drofan, an annoying English name, that's all you need to know. Of course he's a fucking bard. <laughs> that's me! <laughs> oh god, that voice. <laughs> and... And we have some other important, unimportant characters like hey. Will Doran. Oi! Uh. <laughs> what? Introduce me properly, yo! Okay, then we have. Dude, whatever. Wilfred Dion, yo, at your <laughs> services. The best womanizer <laughs> ever. Let's go. Well, okay. I could have been. I could have been Lips. I'm Lipso. I could have been Jack Mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel, oh. what a name. His. He has personal... he has multiple personality disorder. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he be even he's, more annoying. He a, he's a crazy doctor, a sad clown, and a womanizing ladies man. Oh, so you can be my wingman. Nice. A sad clown is one thing that I love to do. Just all of a <laughs> sudden, everyone's man. happy and stuff. It's like, yeah, we killed the dragon! It's like... Well, we just opened up the window for a greater evil. You don't know that, of course. Uh... <laughs> so you're kind of like that uh, robot from Hitchhiker's to the Galaxy. Oh, yes, <laughs> pretty <wrong>. much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we saved the universe. But then it'll just get threatened again. Now we're going to have to clean What's it up. What's the point? Oh god. Maybe you could do him later if Lipso ever dies. I mean, <laughs> of course you won't die. <laughs> hint, hint, you're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> also, I like That's how the. Laugh, man. I like how the shortest character in the group actually stands above them all right now. It's because his name won't show up properly otherwise. <laughs> yeah. There's some kind of irony in all that, you know. 
Oh, I'm just standing on I'm just standing on your head. Seems like a lot of work. <laughs> That's what you're here for. You get arrested or you <laughs> you do your work. Uh, Why should I have it. to worry about it? <laughs> when you came. I'm pretty sure that other guy already got arrested. <laughs> oh, of course. It's not like they're ever going to find out the truth, are they? Not like that's going to come out. Probably not. Not unless you tell them. You're not going to tell them, are you? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Depends on how much you like me. Well, oh, I like you a lot, voice in my head. <laughs> you can just pretend I'm one of the many gods of this world. Let's I'm telling see, you. I, I must change my deity. <laughs> From Avdar to. Voice in my head. <laughs> That's a perfect deity. But now. Since you're all traveling from different locations, you obviously have not much to react to. And I suspect Val Rain actually just jumped off his mountain and started gliding towards where he was meant to go anyway. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> like a pulse. So now you shall all arrive at the Temple Shrine. Where Which is loading is very awkward. Ground. Yes, it'll take a bit to load. There's a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> Tell me when it's loaded. I'd say it's done. Yep. Okay, good. Right. This temple has been chosen as a place where you would all meet. It's because it's neutral ground between the orc lands and the human lands, simply because there's a powerful deity that lives here. And <laughs> you about all arrive at about the same time. Valvain may have come a bit sooner. <laughs> we made a flash yes. entrance. <laughs> hmm. Um. So what? The doors are open, are they? The ones in front of you are currently closed. Hmm. By the way, this is a typical front of a Japanese shrine kind of deal, and I'll be explaining what the world's like in other videos. So. Okay. <laughs> As I said, this is a Japanese-style building, but has strong brick walls of medieval. Of course, you have a little donation thing in the middle, and two doors on the side. I see. Um, if Valerain was the first to arrive there, then he's just going to you know, shake himself off, catch his breath a bit, and then uh, he's going to knock, I would suppose. Going to knock on the main door then, yeah? Uh, would that be this one, right? Or would that be this one? Well, can you go outside? You ah, I see. And yes, in that case, yeah, yeah he'll... Get one of his talons and rap on the door. All right then. I walk up behind <laughs> him, and go like, "What you doing?" <laughs> Val Val Rain will ignore the tiny creature for now. You. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by this point, Masuki has actually arrived as well. I think he should roll an intelligence check to see if he can ignore me. <laughs> 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 You only said hello. He can ignore a simple word. Don't worry. Don't have to roll that much for it. I didn't say hello. I asked, what's he doing? Yeah, you said a few words. Don't worry. You don't have to do anything to avoid the annoying them. Not yet. Good. <laughs> right. When you rap on the door, there is no answer. Though, you clearly see the door open a little as you knock. So the door opens, I knock. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be closed at all. They just seem to be doors without locks or anything. Oh, Ooh, in that what's case, here? Um, Val Rain will take off his like special Tengu sandals and just sort of start clacking inside the, uh, the building. So you are going inside? Lipso, what about you? I'll look around, seemingly amazed by everything. Ooh, ooh, empty yep. room. Blazers. And so Mizuki follows on in as well, yeah? Mm-hmm. Alright then. You're inside. And 
<laughs> okay. Right. I start pooping fire with my sword. Yep. Did you put fire with your sword? It just embers there, still glowing and bringing up the otherwise dark, dim room. Yep, gonna keep doing that. Okay. You, you keep doing that then. <laughs> but, Bell Rain. Yep. As you, <laughs> you must roll a dex roll. Dex right. roll. Balls. You failed. And for failing, you get a door in <laughs> your face. A door in the face. You feel right next to this door. As you're in front of this door, the door opens up and it kind of knocks you. <laughs> it kind of knocks you back a little. As so, uh, Valrain someone... will sort of call quite loudly and sort of flap as, as he sort of steps back from the door. That looks like it hurt. <laughs> yeah, maybe he takes <laughs> damage. <laughs> 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 Opening a door. The first death of the game. Door kills bird. <laughs> <laughs> if you got it's just like a Windex yeah. commercial all over again. <laughs> He's not used to a birdhouse of this size. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to doors. We do not have doors in the nesting grounds. Thanks. But yeah, as the door opens, there's this young girl in a black short black gear holding a feather in her hand. And she's looking at all you and says, Ah, you finally arrived. At last. Did she pluck you? Yeah, it's not a Tengu feather, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't tell that. Not from where you're standing. Since you're Perception check. I want to pl pluck a feather off the Tengu. Oh dear. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to, you know, put your may be aware since he talked to you beforehand that you're looking at him, so you could try opposing speed checks. Uh, I want to slide a hand check. <laughs> you want to try sleight of handing a loose feather from him, do you? Yes. Right, you can do a perception if you want to try spotting him and stopping him beforehand. Yes, I'd like <laughs> to do a perception. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Skills. What do I have in perception? Let's have a look. Eh, it's not bad. Oh, balls. Unless he rolls low, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Plus eight. Amazing. Yeah, as you take. You probably wouldn't even feel that. Yeah, probably <laughs> not. Target. It just tugs a loose feather off you. Yeah, just big. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I wave it again. The face. Uh, Look, the I'm Nipso. her. Do, 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 do. <laughs> but Nipso, you actually notice that the girl actually seen you do that, and she's looking at you like, why? And then just turns <laughs> and goes, follow me. If you're ignoring the tasty morsel, I'm just gonna keep. I I, 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 I skip behind. Oh, um, he's not the hole in the ground. The <laughs> There's a hole in the thing. Please watch it. Yeah, I just... She opens the other set of doors before walking off to the side. It's like, please, sit. But, <laughs> hang on a minute. Uh, can you stop going in the same square? <laughs> I was in that square first. <laughs> <laughs> right, as you enter, you actually see somebody over by the desk over to the left. I walk oh, over. we have guests? <laughs> Whoa. Walk over. Oh what my god, so fast. Ruin? I wave the feather in his face. Uh, can I, uh, Wilfred what tries to doing? take the feather from him. You want to try taking the feather then? Yeah. He just reaches out to I... take the feather. No. So are you not. trying any actual effort on this part? Or... No. He's just trying to take it. No. <laughs> He's just trying right, to move so... the feather from his face. <laughs> Alright then, so you can choose to let him or not. No, it's mine! <laughs> Wilfred looks to the feather and then back to Vaurain and is like, uh, are you shedding or something? <laughs> uh, 
out of our range is going to sort of sit down quite traditionally on the pillow and sort of ignore everyone. We're looking, just looking at the girl, waiting he's for not, his instructions. He's not very friendly. I'm going to change that. You're, you're <laughs> a... That I'm going to make him homicidal. <laughs> I don't um, know which yet. Wilfred just stands there scratching his head, looking very confused. Okay, bye! <laughs> I skip off. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Are these okay. mugs what are these are these mugs filled with anything? They're actually not at the moment, but there's a tankard or some drink. There's like wine of some kind. Of some kind. Hmm. Mm. It's not actually the normal red or white, it's more purplish. Like, that could, oh, wait. that could either mean it's some wine that could damage me, or it's some delicious new kind of wine. Maybe. But, Wilfred, the girl, as you know as Key, actually is looking at you and going, Right, may you also take your seat, Wilfred. Please don't be a bother. Right, right, right. Jesus. But she goes, I believe you all know why you are here. Yes. I do? I do? Why am I here? Uh, at this point, uh, Wilfred looks to Matsuki and Vaurain and is like, Is your friend okay? Are all gnomes like that? What's a gnome? Oh dear. I'm a gnome. <laughs> oh, Wait, I, th- I what's think you I am. food. I think I'm a gnome. <laughs> Maybe I'm an orc. I can't really remember. <laughs> Gnomes are tiny humans, I think. That's Key saying that. Uh, Key, are you sure this is all of them? Yes, but I believe that there's one missing. Hmm. There's actually a few that have yet to get back to us on their letters. You would have to see that later. Alright then. Uh, well, why don't we start with some basic uh, introductions then? My name is Wilfred Dion, and I am the greatest alchemist in the world. Pleased to meet you. Key size and flashy walks over to the I challenge you! <laughs> challenge me? Yes! Um, to what? Comedy! <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll get back to you, okay? <laughs> he he looks over to Matsuki, and uh, Wilfred actually gets up from his seat and uh, walks uh, closer to her. He puts uh, both his hands behind his back and takes something from his back pocket. He then puts his hands in front of him and claps them together. When he spreads them, he um, uh, makes a snap and uh, jolts his hand towards her, and in his, in his hand appears a beautiful red rose, which he offers to her. Thank you, but I don't take gifts on policy. Things tend to be exploding, or poison-filled, or beacons to extraplanar demons. You know how it is. Oh? Well... Okay, I, I guess. Make a stealth, I want to make a stealth check to come up behind him. <laughs> you cannot actually make yourself check in a rightly bit room with several people in it. That's your opinion. <laughs> I'm very small. If you were tiny, maybe. Well, no one's <laughs> looking at me. I want to oh. make a disguise check. <laughs> Key is actually looking straight at me. She's not, she's not letting her That's eyes okay. wander from That's me. okay. She's not the one I'm trying to trick. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. I tell you what, tell me what are you trying to do, and I may consider it. Okay, let's see if I mm-hmm. can find that picture again. Because this this isn't going to be just about your roles and how much skilled you are. There's actual nope. role playing involved in this campaign. What? It is still <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> Damn it, if you can convince me, then I will let it. But yeah, Wilfred, you carry on with your thing while he's looking for the picture. 
Uh, since Mitsuki refuses the rolls, he just sets it down on the table near her and says, Please to, please to meet you. What's your name? Uh, people call me Mitsuki. Uh, I'm from a empire very far away. Um, I wander the land, kill people for money. <laughs> Isn't living. I'd take it you're a yokai. Ah, an outsider knows our name. Yes, indeed. Very good. I'm impressed. Uh, he nods to her and moves on to Valrain. And uh, to his surprise, Wilfred actually speaks, speaks in the tongue of the Tengu. Well met. I trust your uh, journey here was not hard. I want to look no, like that. Not in the slightest. How do you know my tongue? Well, my uh, parents were explorers in a way, <laughs> shall we say. So they left me with a lot of books to grow up. One of them contained the language of your people, which I learned. Interesting. You and I may be the only ones here to get on. His eyes narrow at the other two as he turns and sort of pours some wine into his tankard. Well, let's keep an open mind. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll all be friends in time. Although I'm not sure about the gnome. Be prepared to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jealous of my feather. Uh, after that, oh, uh, Wilfred uh, nods to him as well and continues towards uh, the gnome. And he's still kind of not sure how to approach him, so he's just like... Hi. Hi! Um, what's your name? Lipso! You Pleased can call to meet me you. Lip. Uh, I think Lipso's fine. <laughs> uh, pleased to meet you, Lipso. Um, yeah, you seem to be a little out of it. Have you, like, smoked or taken something suspicious lately? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. Mm, Alright then. <laughs> and he nods to him and oh just goes God. back to his seat. He is actually looking at you like you're... He's like... Uh, <laughs> maybe. He's like... And these are the people that I meant to help. <laughs> she, she, she just looks so defeated right now. She's like... So... so it's the death of me. He's <laughs> like... It's like, I have a feeling that gnome is not who he says he is. But she doesn't say that, by the way. It's just like... like what gives you that feeling? It's just like... Ugh. But at this point, he actually reaches over to the door beside her and knocks on it several times. And she goes, Master, Wilfred needs help. Key, <laughs> uh, by the way... That, uh... Speaking of help, uh, I was wondering if you can uh, help me with something later tonight in my shop. Uh, do I have to go away there again? Bow well, chico. wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I can come pick you up if you want. Oh, cool. How about eight? She's just, uh, <laughs> she just looking down and going, Master, hurry up, please. Wolf is hitting on me. <laughs> And at this point... So cold. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's so cold, my ass. But yeah. At this point, another person enters the room. But this time from the back doors leading outside. He looks like a scruffy human. As he walks through the door. But the way like, he, uh, he calls him Master, you'd suspect that this is actually the deity of this shrine. Hmm. <sighs> right, he speaks. As soon as he enters, he goes, ah, Did you really need my help? I had hoped to just stay out of this. Well, It would only be due respect to show yourself to us, human. <laughs> I am far from a human, but Yes, I suppose, since I am a host and all. He's actually looking at Wilfred. He actually steps behind Wilfred two times. And he'll put one off to the side, like, Why are you sitting in my seat? Uh, 
Um, I don't know, I like this seat for some reason, it was different. Just pass me that bottle of wine down there. It's like he points to the rack beside you. Wilfred reaches in, grabs a bottle of wine and checks it at him. Here you go. He grabs it. Easily. He goes, Right then. So, do you know why you're all here? I hope he has explained it. Nope. Uh, I guess yes. I can do that now. Well then, hurry along. I'm gonna have a drink and sit over here. He actually goes over by the wall and slops down on it. And starts drinking like some sort of homeless guy. <laughs> right, well, um, I basically... Fine. I basically wrote a letter to most of the races and I uh, kind of uh, told them about what I know so far, what happened to the Northeast and uh, what I suspect is um, basically a giant army marching on us. So I was hoping maybe the other races would kind of uh, send their representatives so we can talk out some basic uh, uh, anti-war pacts and peace treaties so we can basically help each other establish trade routes and maybe prepare for what might be the biggest war since like 200 years ago with the rebellion if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. What <laughs> is in the army? Hmm. Or do you just know numbers? Well, unfortunately, I have no information about numbers. All I know is from basic reports which I've gotten thanks to my connections to the castle. My information is very limited. But uh, from what I gather, the orcs and the gnomes are the ones who are most, uh, most exposed and have the most contact with the threat to the northeast. So I was maybe hoping the gnome representative can tell us more about that. <laughs> not particularly, no. So, you don't remember what I told you, or you're just not telling them? What did you tell me? Oh, damn. I told you exactly what the threat was. When we talked. And what you were meant to know as part of your race. I wasn't really paying <laughs> attention then. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> and you're gonna be penalized for not actually knowing it. <laughs> That's okay, Lipso doesn't care. <laughs> so yes, he doesn't Here, we need a different gnome. Oh, he's <laughs> in jail! <laughs> Wait, what? What jail? Who's in jail? The other gnome! What other gnome? The one I met on the road! What? Does anyone understand what this gnome is trying to say? I look the, the, or, the orcs got tired of my pranks and they kicked me out. Oh, so basically the orcs uh, didn't send a representative, they sent someone they wanted to get rid of. Excellent. No, I'm pretty sure they sent a representative. I met him. I may have gotten him thrown in jail, but I'm not sure why. Wait. It may have been, it may have been that bank we robbed, but I'm not sure. Wh what? Wilfred is very confused by now. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> that that is basically what I look like because he's got black hair and blue eyes. Yeah, you... suddenly the gnome disappears in a cloud of smoke. Suddenly he's wearing different clothes. So wait, it's you... true. I have smoke pellets. Poof. Who are you? Where am I? So wait, <laughs> did you get the real gnome representative in jail on your way here? Maybe. I'm not sure. He had this letter. Letter. <laughs> I wave it around, along with my feather in the other hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you hand me over the letter, please? Sure! I try Thanks. to throw it at him. Oh, wow! Wilfred catches the letter and opens it so he can read it. As you open it, it actually is the invitation letter that you sent out. Oh! <laughs> So, did you take this from the real representative, I take it? No, he gave it to me. He gave it to you. Yeah, something about... 
precipice of war, world in danger. I don't know. I really wasn't paying attention. I didn't want to be in jail. He was handing me stuff through the bars and stuff. And um, uh, just so we can get this out of the way, he looks over to Matsuki and Vaurain. You didn't get anybody in jail and uh, replace them, right? You're supposed to be here. I was the one chosen by my clan. <laughs> yes. Okay then. Um. Well, this is gonna be a little more uh, difficult than I thought. He scratches his head a little lost again. So unfortunately it seems that the elves has, have not answered my invitation yet. Nor have the dwarves or the dark elves, which is a little disheartening. But I am glad that you are here and uh, the gnome, which I don't know why you're here, but uh, hi! Hi! <laughs> He actually pipes up at that point and goes, uh, I believe they're called Drow. They're called Dark Elves. Shut up. That's racist. <laughs> well, are they not elves and of dark skin? She, she actually says nothing more in the match. <laughs> she was just bringing it up. I mean, out. if we wanted to be racist, we'd call them Black Elves. <laughs> Uh, when uh, when uh, Will sees that uh, the girl went silent, he actually gasps and turns to the gnome. To the gnome. Okay, never mind. I like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually Perhaps. looking down to him with a murderous glare at this point. Perhaps we should be treating our hosts with a little more respect. Kuma actually holds up a rainbow. I like that guy. Uh, I don't know what they teach you in the other kingdoms, but we are taught to we are taught other things. <laughs> uh, Wilfred, when uh, when uh, Vaurain says that about respect, he looks back to the deity who's just like a hobo drinking in the corner and is like, uh, "Yeah, let's not give our respect to the host, okay? He doesn't. No, just no. I'm it will, it will go goes, to his I head." Curse you. Kuma actually goes, "I curse you, bad luck. You know I will. Done it before." You can? Can you curse me with good luck? Or I how about funny luck? Cross a donation. I had this feather. Let's hold out. Let's hold out his hand. Real donation. Money. Gold. Guys, guys, please don't be fooled by him. He has no real power. He's just a drunk. Don't. Don't. Just don't. You expect your garden to grow next year. He says as he <laughs> takes another sweep from the wine bowl. <laughs> so. I guess, uh... Wilfred stands up from his seat and moves over to one of the other ones. Maybe if uh, the so-called god decides to join us at the table, he can explain a few more things to us, now that we're assembled, more or less. <laughs> he says actually, that to the god. Kumar looks at, <laughs> he looks around and goes, Me? <laughs> okay. He stands, he stands up from where he was and he goes, starts walking over. Goes well. What he said was basically true. Seeing in the wine bottles, but there is something you may want to know also. Since I, like everybody else, know what the threat is that threatens this world. Well, kind of. I should really be able to tell you, you know, rules and restrictions of being a deity and all. Is the fact that it is big. Bigger than a single kingdom can withhold. And you're gonna need some powerful allies to stop what's coming. Oh, and <laughs> of course, since I know two of you are probably interested, there are great rewards on the horizon. He's looking at Mizuki and Dipso at this moment. I switched to Celestial as a language. Yes. So, are you a real god or not? You know, you can speak to me in my normal tongue, right? I was a human before him. Alright, I switch back to common. <laughs> ah, looks like he's the real deal. He goes, There are differences between a deity and a god, as you so speak. A deity has control of uh, maybe a certain aspect, while a god has control over a lot. For instance, a god of war has aspect over everything, war related. But a god of swords is a deity of swords. He controls only that. Me, I'm the deity of earth. 
a quite powerful one, but only part of this land. The land is not really my jurisdiction, but as you say. <laughs> Even Tingu have deities. Yes, uh, we do. By the way, sorry to interrupt you guys, but uh, Jordan, uh, your mic seems to pick up uh, pick up when you breathe from time to time, and uh, it kind of creates noise. Can you kind of uh, work on so your mic a little bit? Now, if you wish, you can ask me questions. I prefer if you did, since I don't feel right just sending you out unprepared. Where are you even sending us to? Well. It is not me who is sending you. It is Wilfred and his girlfriend. By the way, he's smiling at that point almost, <laughs> and he's just looking towards Wilfred. He's like, But where I'm sending you to is basically Abyssa, the human kingdom which is essentially helping you. Your first starting point, as it were. <sighs> I'm not fond of humankind, but if we must... Oh, humans aren't so bad. Weak-willed, easily manipulated, lots of extra gold lying around. Yeah, I love humans. Oh, right. As they say that, both Kuma and Ki look towards real slowly. Why are you <laughs> looking at me? No reason, they both say in unison. You will go there. And I believe Will could uh, set you up within his home for at least a day until you can see the Queen. Really? Yeah, well, my shop ain't that big, but I guess I can make a uh, little room for you guys. So we can, you know, get to know each other better before we set out. Also, I do suggest you plan out what you are going to do. The place is big and he actually looks at him and goes, Master, the map. Oh, right. <laughs> I almost forgot. He actually, at this point, reaches into his gi and pulls out what looks like to be a very sturdy looking map. As you know, the lands are not exactly together anymore. And 200 years is not a very long time for mortals. Well, considering ages. But. Nobody has had time to map out the world as such, so I do this to help you. It's a magic map which you can change at your will and add whatever you may find. Oh, all the important things are here, I think. Yeah, she looks a bit uh, confused. <laughs> it's like, is it? Hmm. Uh, Wilfred, Wilfred, at that point, uh gets his attention and is like, um, over here where the Dwarven Kingdoms are, what, uh, is that really the name of the place? Wh why would they name it that? Yes, that is the name of the place. Master, no, it's the name of the place. He just looks dejected like it is. It so is. <laughs> why would they call their place the ripoff market? That seems like bad marketing. Mm. By the way, Mizuki, if, since you probably traveled through that area to get here, you would know that was actually known as the Golden Market. Ah. Yes, their marketing department is quite clever in that way. Uh, I respect that um, our deity here has had the sense to see through it. Ah, good. See, see, please take the map. So, why have you also scribbled on the down part lying midgets? Look, just ignore that. Just, just ignore the, just ignore this. Okay, just it's on there. It's important. Just don't rub it out. Don't show it to any dwarves. Hmm. I've met, a, I've met a few draw, dwarves. Well, as to be expected, your kingdoms coincide with each other. They don't like jokes. No, no, they do not. <laughs> yeah, she looks down. Like, they also don't like being mocked. Orcs are better sports than them. I've never really met an orc up close. I've had a few pray to me before, though. They're kind of fun. They're kind of fun to mess with. Mess with? In what way? 
But I used to make fun of their unibrows. Oh, yes, that is fun. Uh, wait, hang on. Um, back on track. <laughs> he actually looks surprised. Oh, wow, he did it himself. What track? Look, you're meant to be um, focusing on the map. Got well, something stuck in my foot. Hang on. <clears throat> <laughs> As you can see, we we'll put all the important places and lying places you shouldn't go. I, 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 I'm sure you guys know which is which. But anyway, that is what I'm giving you to help you on your journey. From this point on, you may contact me if you need any real help. But from this point on, you're on your own. In that case, I suggest we do not waste any more... Any more... Time. Pudding! <laughs> pudding, okay. It's You're bad to waste good out. pudding. Uh, well, I suppose it wouldn't be that uh, that hard to get to Abyssa. In fact, I don't think... Master, look, look, we're talking here. Master, there's somebody outside. What do you mean? <laughs> you never get donations here. He actually walks up and looks out the door. He's like, oh. <laughs> Who is it? Right. Um, you guys know how to fight, correct? Yes. I've never been yeah. in a fight before. A bit? I don't expect you to live more. But that's for a greater good. But this is the important thing. It seems that we have some undesirables here. Though I do not know why, though I could suspect why. And as a deity, I am forbidden to fight them. So, <laughs> good luck. Well, yeah, going to move around the table, desk. draw his sword from his cane. <laughs> right. So, there's only one thing to do here. Ulfred gets up, and he goes over to Key. Let's flee together, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> She's just looking at him for a moment and goes... Sure, you can be my meat shield. Oh, uh, um... Uh. Anything for you! <laughs> she just gives you such a dull look, like, you're not going to do it, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> just get out there and fight them. I'll be back here. So, how about we take a short one minute break before the... encounter, supposedly? <laughs> yes, we should take a five minute break from this point. Since I need to go off and do stuff. So five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>